name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We gather to celebrate the 17th Sunday in the Church's journey through its ordinary time. We come with our prayers and petitions, and at the request of the Holy Father, we also remember uh, this evening and tomorrow, the second World Day for Grandparents and the Elderly. Holy Father has written a message uh, which is available on the Vatican website, but encouraging uh, all of us to recognize and to honor those who are elderly and those who are grandparents. Not necessarily do you need to be one to be the other, of course. And so we remember in particular in prayer all grandparents and those whose shall we say more mature years of life as we bring all our prayers and petitions before the Lord we ask him for his support in our day to day lives we ask him with help in how we pray Those who may be watching at a later Mass during the week, uh, 8.30 on Sunday morning Mass is offered for all our parishioners, and at 10.30 the Mass is being offered for the deceased relatives of the Lobo, de Mello and de Silva families. And although it seemed to have gone well, Lord, have mercy. You teach us wisdom and write your truth in our inmost heart. Christ, have mercy. You forgive sins through the ministry of reconciliation. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks. Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. You are the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, protector of those who hope in you. As firm foundation, nothing is hope. Bestow in abundance upon us with you as our and guide. We may use the good things that in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. O 
A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord said, How great an outcry there is against Sodom and Gomorrah! How grievous is their sin! I propose to go down and see whether or not they have done all that is alleged in the outcry against them that has come up to me. I am determined to know. The men left there and went to Sodom, while Abraham remained standing before the Lord. Approaching him, he said, Are you really going to destroy the just man with the sinner? Perhaps there are fifty just men in the town. Will you really overwhelm them? Will you not spare the place for the fifty men in it? Do not think of doing such a thing, to kill the just man with the sinner, treating just and sinner alike. Do not think it. Will the judge of the whole earth not administer justice? The Lord replied, If at Sodom I find fifty just men in the town, I will spare the whole place because of them. Abraham replied, I am bold indeed to speak like this to my Lord, I who am dust and ashes. But perhaps the fifty will lack, will just men will lack five. Will you destroy the whole city for five? No, he replied, I will not destroy this, it if I find forty-five just men there. Again, Abraham said to him, Perhaps there will only be forty there. I will not do it, he replied, the forty. Abraham said, I trust my Lord will not be angry, but give me leave to speak. Perhaps there will only be thirty there. I will not do it, he replied, if I find thirty there. He said, I am bold indeed to speak like this, but perhaps there will only be twenty there. I will not destroy it, he replied, for the sake of the twenty. He said, I trust my Lord will not be angry if I speak once more. Perhaps there will only be ten. I will not destroy it, he replied, for the sake of the ten. The word of the Lord. On the day I called, you answered me, O Lord. On the day I called, you answered me, O Lord. I thank you, Lord, with all my heart. You have heard the words of my mouth. Before the angels, I will bless you. I will adore before your holy temple. On the day I called, you answered me, O Lord. I thank you for your faithfulness and love, which excel all we ever knew of you. On the day I called, you answered, you increased the strength of my soul. On the day I called, you answered me, O Lord. The Lord is high, yet looks on the lowly, and the haughty he knows from afar. Though I walk in the midst of affliction, you give me life and frustrate my foes. On the day I called, you answered me, O Lord. You stretch out your hand and save me. Your hand will do all things for me. Your love, O Lord, is eternal. Discard not the work of your hands. On the day I called, you answered me, O Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. You have been buried with Christ when you were baptised, and by baptism too you have been raised up with him through your belief in the power of God who raised him from the dead. You were dead because you were sinners and had not been circumcised. 
He has brought you to life with him. He has forgiven us all our sins. He has overridden the law and cancelled every record of debt that we had to pay. He has done away with it by nailing it to the cross. The word of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 The word was made flesh and lived among us. To all who did accept him, he gave power to become children of God. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Lord, Once Jesus was in a certain place praying, and when he had finished, one of his disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. And he said to them, Say this when you pray, Father, may your name be held holy. Your kingdom come, give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive each one who is in debt to us, and do not put us to the test. He also said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend and goes to him in the middle of the night to say, My friend, lend me three loaves, because a friend of mine on his travels has just arrived at my house and I have nothing to offer him. And the man answers from inside the house, do not bother me, the door is bolted now and my children and I are in bed. I cannot get up to give it to you. I tell you, if the man does not get up and give it him for friendship's sake, persistence will be enough to make him get up and give his friend all he wants. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For the one who asks always receives. The one who searches always finds. The one who knocks will always have the door open to him. What father among you would hand his son a stone when he's asked for bread, or hand him a snake instead of a fish, or hand him a scorpion if he asks for an egg. If you then, who are evil, know how to give your children what is good, how much more will the Heavenly Father give you the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The Gospel of the Lord. To you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Christian disciple must be active like the Good Samaritan and listening deeply like Mary Bethany who we heard about last week. And today we hear about prayer in response to requests from Jesus' disciples. But Jesus does more than they ask for. He teaches them what prayer is for, how to pray and what results can be expected from their prayer. According to St. Augustine, whatever else you say when you, we pray, if we pray as we should, we are only saying what is already contained in the Lord's Prayer. In Mass, it's Matthew's longer version that we recite. Matthew focuses our attention on the petition, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Luke, on the other hand, focuses on the petition, give us each our daily bread. For Luke, 
the Lord's Prayer is predominantly an appeal to our Heavenly Father for the necessities of life. As it is presented by Luke, it's less a prayer to be recited than a list of things around which our prayer should be centred. It begins by addressing God as Father. We do not address him as Lord or Master or Judge. St. Paul reminds us that this title is meant to be understood on the warmest and most intimate level. He tells us to call God Abba, Papa, Daddy, titles used affectionately by young children all over the world. We too are to address him as such. But by each of us calling him Father, there's an implication that we are all his children and are brothers and sisters of each other, members of one family. And that the hour in the Our Father is totally inclusive. There are no exceptions. The Our Father is much more than just a prayer or petition. It's also a statement of who we are to God and to each other. We confirm or condemn ourselves every time we pray. May your name be held holy. Here we are praying that God himself, and just not his name, be revered by all. We are asking that God's holiness be acknowledged by us, by our words, and most importantly, by the way we live our lives. In other words, it is a prayer that God's holiness be reflected in our lives and in the lives of every single person. Your kingdom come. By this we understand it is a world in which everything that God stands for becomes a reality in the lives of people everywhere. A world that is built on truth and love, compassion and justice, freedom and human dignity and peace. In saying this invocation, we are not only calling on God's help, but reminding ourselves of working with God to make the kingdom become a reality. Give us each day our daily bread. In the second half of the prayer, we pray now more directly for our own needs. We begin with the present needs. Note we ask that just today's bread, just today's material needs, in praying this way, we express our trust in a caring God. It also implies that we are to see that every person has their needs for today supplied. We do not need to worry and fret about tomorrow. Forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive each one who is in debt to us. We pray here in repentance for our past sinful actions. But our prayer is conditional, linking us to all those around us. We pray that God will forgive us all that we have done wrong, because we already have forgiven those who we feel have done wrong to us. Again, it's the prayer that throws us back on ourselves. We are praying to share God's most beautiful quality, his readiness to forgive, not just 70 times 7, but indefinitely. Do not put us to the test. Finally, we pray that the protection from future trials that might overwhelm us, trials where we might fail and betray our following of him, we probably will have to admit that we, we seldom do justice to this prayer. It not only puts us in touch with God, but also in touch with ourselves. In Luke's Gospel we read how Jesus makes two further points. He tells a parable of a man wanting some bread in the middle of the night. Understandably, his neighbour is reluctant to get up and give him some. But the man keeps badgering. Eventually, says Jesus, Persistence will be enough to make this neighbour to get up and give his friend what he wants. The message is clear. When we really want something from God, we must keep asking. Ask and it will be given to you. Search and you will find. Knock and that door will be opened to you. For the one who asks always receives. Who searches always finds. Who knocks will have the door opened. The Lord also reminds us, that they are dealing with a loving and compassionate father. Even human fathers will not give stones when asked for bread or scorpions when asked for eggs. How much more then can we expect from the father of us all? Some might say if God 
cares for much, so much for us, why do we need to ask so insistently? We need to pray, not because God has to be reminded of our wants. He does not need to be persuaded to give us what we need. But he certainly does not always give us what we want. For our wants are often short-sighted and self-centred. The way we pray and what we ask for can indeed be very revealing of where we are in our relationship with God and with other people. Persevering in prayer can help us become more aware of what we should really be asking for. It helps to purify our prayer, make clear our values and our hopes, and lead us to ask for what is really in our own best interest. And those are the very things we can be absolutely sure God wants us to have. As we acknowledge our need to learn how to pray more deeply, we profess our faith in the Lord God Almighty. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, who was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We come together to worship and give thanks to our Father in heaven. Let us place our prayers before him, asking for help to be aware of our need of his forgiveness and love. We give thanks for the presence of the Holy Spirit in the Church. May our leaders be guided and inspired to work for the spread of the Gospel message throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy. For the world, God's creation and our home. After the extreme heat and its consequences during this week, Let us pray that it may raise awareness and trigger action to protect the environment among all those who have the power to make a difference, including ourselves. Lord, in your mercy. For grandparents and for the elderly. The Pope, quoting the Psalms, writes, In old age they will still bear fruit. May all people be inspired to honour the elderly. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all who are sick in our parish, that they may have the strength to bear their suffering and be granted healing of mind and body. Lord, in your mercy. 
In a moment of silence, we place all our personal prayers before the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, as we thank the Lord for the graces given us through the intercession of Our Lady, Mother of Tender Love, let us seek her help as we say together, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou once, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, in the hour of our death. Amen. Our Father in heaven, listen to the prayers of your people, and help us to be your loving and true children. Help us to answer your call to love, and to take your message to all we meet this week. We make our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So I invite you to be seated once more as we prepare our altar for the Eucharist and we take our collection and we place all our prayers upon the altar, praying especially in this Mass for the well-being of Sean Stringer. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice on my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord Amen the Lord be with you lift up your hearts let us give thanks to the Lord our God 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his Paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvellous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of now being called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works. For you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And we pray the second Eucharistic prayer. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, Paul, his assistant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, 
we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. <laughs> Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. communion antiphon. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and never forget all his benefits. Let us stand and pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may now profit us for salvation, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just invite you, please, to be seated uh, once more. So, as, as always, do ask you to take home and read and make any appropriate notes of our uh, bright, sunshiny, yellow newsletter this week and um, various things that are coming up. Um, I appreciate that as uh, the summer months are upon us now, with schools having broken up, uh, uh, some will be toing and froing on holidays, but uh, uh, so we wish anyone who's going to to leave our wonderful little town and go on holiday for somewhere else for some bizarre and unknowable reason, um, a very good, happy, restful, peaceful time nonetheless. If you are staying here, well, it'd be great to see you if you want to pop in for prayers and what have you. Um, 
As the holidays are starting, uh, somebody suggested that we may want to give a plug to the Ride and Stride event so that people can put, start putting it in their diary. So that's uh, in September, and on the 10th of September, um, so that's the event where people will visit local churches and uh, raise money for uh, the, the fund that helps support uh, repairs to some churches in the local area and then the other half goes to the parish or the community into which they belong. So uh, if you fancy walking or riding around the local churches, um, make a note in your diary and the parish will take the half that comes to us very gratefully. Um, you'll see on the top of the newsletter, on the back, uh, back side as, as it were, um, a little note about uh, just how Archbishop John's going to look after the Kent area. So we had one Bishop Paul and he was moved to the Bishopric of the Forces in 2018. Um, we're now going to get another Bishop Paul, uh, uh, Bishop Hendricks, not Jimmy Hendricks, but Paul Hendricks. Uh, so Bishop Paul, who has been looking after the southwest of London, uh, will come and arrive in, in September sometime to help look after, on behalf of Archbishop John, uh, our area here in Kent. Uh, as you may be aware, the Pope's going uh, travelling, and so we pray for him as he takes up his uh, uh, latest trip of seeking reconciliation uh, as he travels to Canada. If you're at a loose end tomorrow morning, about half past 11, uh, you can come back for a tea and a coffee, and uh, it's SVP's turn this time, and so there's bacon rolls. And if they're anything like they're normal, it's also egg rolls, or even if you're really desperate, bacon and egg rolls. So they, 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 have, they provide those to raise some funds for themselves as well. There's a little note in there of prayers and congratulations to uh, Alfie Oliver Owens. Well, Alfie's here this evening, somewhere, and uh, it's now going to be my practice, where possible, to present baptismal certificates at Mass just after they've been baptised. So I'm going to ask um, someone, because Alfie is small, he's not going to be able to make it on his own, to come out. Oh, Grandpa's bringing him. Oh dear. He, he didn't want to be moved, so... Oh, it's, it's either that or it's hot. Anyway. Okay. Oh, and his brother's coming out to keep him company as well. So I think, considering that you couldn't be here last weekend on the, Saturday, on the Sunday uh, to, for him to be baptised, he deserves a round of applause. <laughs> oh, shake your hand, Elfie. Welcome to our church. It's great to see you. And I'm going to give this to your brother. You're going to look after this for your brother. There we are. And so there we go. So it's wonderful. Uh, we're, we're not all elderly or grandparents. There's little ones too. So great, great, wonderful to see you both. See you soon. There we are. I think that's enough excitement for one evening. I'm going to ask you to stand. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, peace, glorify the Lord by your love. Thanks be to God.